19. Michelle Watson In November 2011, a suspect, later identified as 24-year-old Michelle Watson, was seen driving erratically in Prescott, Arizona. Witnesses reported seeing the woman's Honda Civic swerving across the road and striking several curbs before driving up onto the sidewalk. When approached by police, Watson allegedly spewed profanities at them. She also kneed an officer in the groin while he tried removing her purse from her shoulder. She was accused of refusing to get up and walk after being taken to the ground and handcuffed, forcing officers to carry her to a patrol vehicle. According to law enforcement, Watson kicked the patrol car after being put in the back seat and had to be further restrained. While being booked into the Yavapai County Jail, the young woman flashed a wide grin and gave the camera two thumbs up. Her mugshot went viral and hasn't been forgotten, even after more than 12 years have passed since her arrest. She was charged with aggravated assault on a police officer, resisting arrest, and drunk driving. 18. Dazed and Confused in Santa Rosa in April 2022, a pair of police officers pulled over a young woman in a Volkswagen Jetta for driving erratically in Santa Rosa, Florida. She was seen traveling in the wrong direction and swerving all over the road. When asked about where she was going and what her plans were, the 18-year-old said she was running errands and doing normal adult things. The officer prodded for more information, and the seemingly dazed and confused driver explained that she was on her way to pick up a friend to run errands with her. She said that she doesn't like doing things alone because she has anxiety. She further explained that she planned to visit a marijuana dispensary and return home with her goods. The teen offered to show the cops her medical marijuana card, but they were more concerned about seeing a prescription for the Xanax bars they found in her car. She admitted to not having a prescription for the pills, but claimed she hadn't taken any. This was questionable, though, given that her speech was noticeably slow and she seemed out of it. A female officer asked the driver, who was standing outside her vehicle, if her purse was in her car. She said yes and went to reach for the bag, although the officer repeatedly said she would get it herself. So, the officer yanked the woman away from the car by her elbow and warned her to stay in place. The dopey driver accused the lady cop of being disrespectful and went off on a tangent, saying, We're all humans here. But it was the suspect who was rude as the officer went through her wallet in search of her ID. With more than a touch of snobbiness in her voice, the teen said, Um, can I look through my wallet? as if she were shocked that the police took control of the scene during a suspicious traffic stop. She acted even more bewildered by the fact that the officer went through her belongings with probable cause. The young woman questioned a male deputy at the scene about what she was being accused of in the first place. He explained that someone reported her as a possible drunk driver and that an officer saw the Xanax bars lying in plain view during the traffic stop. This gave law enforcement probable cause to go through the rest of her things. The police were initially patient with the suspect, but grew frustrated as she repeatedly tried going to her car. First, she said that she wanted to sit in the vehicle, but after being scolded and told to remain near a patrol vehicle, she said she was going to grab her phone and began walking toward the sedan. When the cops stopped her, she started rambling about how she needed her phone so she could record her interaction with them. An officer told the teen that she could request a recording of his body cam footage, but she continued to drone on about how it was her human right to record the interaction herself. While being handcuffed and taken into custody, the suspect refused to follow orders and accused the officer who was searching her of feeling her up. She became extremely combative and began kicking and yelling at the cops while being placed into the back of a patrol vehicle. The unlucky officer who transported her to jail had the pleasure of listening to her shout the entire time. Her tirade about how the police were being unfair to her was peppered with anecdotes about the evils of capitalism. The officer calmly ignored the raging suspect, however, while continuing about his day. Along the way, he pulled over to strap the unruly woman into her seat, then kept driving without saying a word. 17. Amy Harrington 
38-year-old Amy Harrington allegedly drove drunk one night in 2022 and was almost home when she rear-ended another vehicle in Madeira Beach, Florida. Responding deputies noticed that her eyes were glassy and red and that her pupils were dilated. This led them to suspect that she was under the influence. According to an arrest report, Harrington struggled to follow instructions during a field sobriety test and was unsteady on her feet and almost falling while trying to walk in a straight line. In body cam footage of the conversation, a deputy could be heard asking Harrington to walk the line. He then said, Do you want to pay attention so I can give you the instructions? Harrington replied with what could perhaps be described as a smart-alecky tone that a child might use, telling the deputy that he sounded like her ballet coach. She proceeded to take five steps down the line and transitioned into a ballet sequence. Unamused, the deputy said, That wasn't the exercise that I was demonstrating. His remark failed to stop Harrington from continuing to bust a move as she changed up her style to what local station WFLA described as a ballet Irish folk hybrid dance. She later refused testing, similarly to how she behaved during a traffic stop in 2019. And as a result, she was charged with driving under the influence with property damage and refusal to submit to testing. 16. Nija Thompson After getting into a fight with his girlfriend at her home in the English city of Leicester in early 2023, 28-year-old Nija Thompson left and got drunk. He returned to the woman's residence hours later and pounded on the door at 1 a.m., prompting neighbors to complain to the police about the noise. When law enforcement arrived, Thompson allegedly called a female officer a tart, a slag, and other names. He was arrested and taken down to the police station, where he refused to answer questions. He also threatened to kick off if interrogators showed him body cam footage of his outburst. The authorities eventually became concerned enough about Thompson's mental health to take him to a hospital. While there, he stopped drinking and got on a wait list for treatment. According to Thompson's lawyer, he had only a hazy recollection of what happened on the day of his arrest. The attorney claimed that her client was on antidepressants that mixed poorly with alcohol. They further argued that Thompson had become delusional by the time he checked into the hospital. At the time of his arrest, he was already serving a suspended sentence for an unrelated case. The court could have revoked the suspended term and sent him to jail for the rest of his sentence, but they didn't do that. Instead, they gave him a conditional discharge on the new charges and ordered him to work on probation to prevent himself from reoffending. 15. Mid-Flight Meltdown During a JetBlue flight from London to New York in early 2024, a heavily intoxicated British passenger became belligerent toward the cabin crew. According to witnesses, it started when the man started moving to different seats while acting loud and aggressive. Crew members asked him to calm down and return to his assigned seat, but his behavior only worsened. In fact, his behavior got so out of control that four fellow travelers stepped in to restrain him. Footage captured by a witness showed the unruly passenger struggling against the men who were holding him down in the aisle. A woman standing nearby, who's believed to be the drunk man's girlfriend, pleaded with one of the men restraining him to remove his hand from the man's face. As another passenger urged her to step back from the chaos, the woman could be heard begging her intoxicated travel companion, whom she called Ben, to stop fighting. But her inebriated boyfriend continued resisting and trying to escape as she helplessly looked on and broke down in tears. As the four men holding the passenger down moved him down the aisle toward the front of the plane, onlookers reacted with shock and confusion. One traveler could be heard reassuring a scared child, while another blurted out, Jesus Christ! The situation remained under control until the plane landed at JFK International Airport, at which point the man was handed off to law enforcement. Passengers later commended the civilians who stepped in to get the situation under control. They credited the men with sparing the flight from having to be diverted and keeping everyone on the plane safe while drawing minimal attention to the situation. 14. Celia Barrett 
Just a few months after being banned from a racetrack gas station in St. Petersburg, Florida, 35-year-old Celia Barrett allegedly entered the store drunk, naked, and wielding a vegetable peeler. According to witnesses, she complained about not being allowed at the business and hurled profanities at the cashier while banging the peeler against the counter. The belligerent trespasser was also accused of threatening the store's manager with a peeler and waving it like she was going to stab him. She then put the peeler down, knocked over a Red Bull display, and ripped open a carton of cigarettes in a fit of rage. Barrett was still at the store when deputies arrived and paid no mind to their presence as she pleasured herself in plain view. She reportedly told law enforcement that she'd taken six shots of liquor before entering the store. The responding deputies quickly ended the nonsense by taking the woman into custody and booking her into the Pinellas County Jail. She was brought up on charges of aggravated assault, disorderly intoxication, trespassing, criminal mischief, and exposure. 13. Christopher Thompson 43-year-old British newlywed Christopher Thompson and his bride were looking forward to their honeymoon on the Greek island of Santorini in September 2023. But the plane never even got off the ground from Manchester Airport before they were kicked off of it due to Thompson's drunken behavior. The trouble started when a flight attendant noticed that Thompson was vaping in his seat and told him to stop. He refused to follow the order and cursed at the captain. The crew deemed Thompson a safety risk, and the flight was cancelled. As officers led him off the plane and to a police van in handcuffs, he yelled to his wife to film what was going on and hire a lawyer. In early 2024, Thompson pleaded guilty to entering an aircraft while drunk. He received a suspended 10-week jail sentence and was ordered to perform 180 hours of community service. Thompson's attorney, Alistair Reed, told the Manchester Evening News that the flight was already delayed, so the newlyweds passed the time with some adult beverages. Out of habit, he reached for his vape, having apparently forgotten that vaping isn't allowed on airplanes. Reed said that his client was humiliated over his shameful reaction to the cabin crew when they told him to stop vaping. He was especially embarrassed after seeing the disappointment in his wife's face as he ruined their honeymoon. 12. Fabian Rivera In December 2022, sheriff's deputies responded to a call at a restaurant in Wayne County, New York. At the scene, they encountered Macedon Police Chief Fabian Rivera, who was allegedly extremely drunk. Employees accused Rivera of threatening them and refusing to leave when they kicked him out of the restaurant. By the time law enforcement arrived, Rivera had fallen several times and cut his face open. According to a police report, he berated the responding deputies while they handled the situation and was taken to the hospital for treatment of his injuries. After the incident, Rivera took some unpaid time off. He said that he had reached out for help with post-traumatic stress disorder resulting from serving in combat during his time in the military. Less than a year later, in November 2023, he crashed his patrol car at 8 a.m., causing vehicle and property damage. According to court documents, Macedon Police Sergeant Bridget Goodfriend observed signs of intoxication and drove Rivera to his home where he allegedly got into his personal vehicle and left. Good friend called him and told him to return home, and thankfully he listened. Upon arriving back at his house, he underwent a field sobriety test. The Wayne County Sheriff's Office later confirmed that his blood alcohol content was 0.25, more than three times the legal limit. Rivera was arrested on suspicion of driving while intoxicated, aggravated DWI, and operating a motor vehicle with a blood alcohol content of 0.08% or higher. He resigned from his position as police chief the following day, and his case is ongoing. 11. L. King Sometimes liquid courage comes in the form of a drunk person who feels like a rock star while giving a sloppy musical performance. One recent example occurred at the Grand Ole Opry in Nashville in January 2024 during Dolly Parton's 78th birthday celebration. 34-year-old singer Elle King, the daughter of actor Rob Schneider, 
was scheduled to give the second performance of the evening. But she forgot the words to Parton's 2001 hit, Marry Me. The clearly drunk musician said that she didn't know the lyrics, quote, to this fucking thing. She then continued swearing and talking smack at the audience, who made it clear that they disapproved of the singer's bizarre display. At the urging of one of her band members, the slurring songstress attempted to salvage her performance by singing one of her own songs, but the effort was in vain. She went back to speaking to the audience, at one point questioning why anyone bought tickets to the show. She then added, Hi, my name is Al King, and I'm fucking hammered. Also known as the Ryman Theater, the Grand Ole Opry has a long-standing rule against cussing on stage. The theater ended King's set early, and disappointed concertgoers took to social media to express their disgust over the botched performance. Many described the performance as a disrespect to Dolly Parton, one of country music's biggest icons, and the theater. In response to the outrage, the Grand Ole Opry apologized for King's behavior and language. But the singer herself hasn't offered an apology. This wasn't King's first time acting inappropriately on stage. During a concert in Detroit in 2023, she slammed a microphone to the ground and walked off stage in a fit of anger. In the past, she's admitted to struggling with substance abuse and having a blunt personality with a tendency to run her mouth. She also said that she likes to calm her nerves before she hits the stage by having a few drinks. But in this particular case, it seems like she had more than just a few. After the botched Dolly Parton tribute, King cancelled and postponed several upcoming concerts without explanation. She has yet to break her silence on the matter, but she's still continued to promote her new album on social media. Maybe she's not ready to talk about what happened, or maybe she's just hoping it will blow over and soon be forgotten. 10. Michael Trueworthy on a summer day in New Britain, Connecticut, that began like any other in July of 2014, Mayor Aaron Stewart began receiving out-of-character phone calls and emails from Michael Trueworthy, an alderman who also served as deputy mayor. Trueworthy headed the local common council. She reportedly noticed that Trueworthy's speech was slurred as he complained about her recent handling of city business. Stewart also accused the alderman of being incoherent and calling her inappropriate names. Shortly after one of their phone conversations ended, Trueworthy showed up at Stewart's office and banged on the door. To avoid a scene in the lobby, Stewart's chief of staff let him in. According to a police report, Trueworthy continued acting belligerent and demanded alcohol. When Stewart said that she didn't have any, he allegedly threatened to search her office for it. Trueworthy went on to tell the mayor not to run for office again and that he would campaign for the position. He was being led out of the building by friends when police arrived in response to a call from one of Stewart's staff members. Responding officers noticed that he was stumbling, leaning on his friends, and smelled of booze. Stewart opted not to press charges, but Trueworthy ran into more trouble later that evening when he was thrown out of a local bar for demanding alcohol and making homophobic remarks. He later apologized to the mayor and to the general public. He stated that he thought he was capable of just having one beer, but that this clearly wasn't the case. Trueworthy stepped down from his position as deputy mayor, but refused to give up his council seat. He made good on his promise to run for mayor and became the front-running Democrat challenging Stewart's bid for re-election. But he lost, and Stewart has been re-elected three times since then. She remains in office today, more than 10 years after becoming the nation's youngest mayor at age 26. 9. Traffic Stop Snacker In a bizarre police encounter that took place in 2021, Officers pulled over a driver in Russia's Irkutsk region after receiving complaints about a car traveling on the wrong side of the road and cutting off other vehicles. The unnamed driver's license had expired 10 years earlier, and he appeared to be heavily intoxicated. He refused to undergo a field sobriety test, and he became increasingly agitated. 
as an officer sat next to him in the driver's seat of a patrol car and listened patiently. When the officer handed the belligerent suspect a form to sign, he ripped it out of the cop's hand, crumpled it into a ball, threw it into his mouth, and began chewing on it as he opened the car door and ran. Luckily, though, an officer who was sitting in the back seat rushed out of the vehicle and apprehended the suspect. The driver was then promptly handcuffed and placed into the back of the car. He remained in custody overnight while he sobered up. The man ended up spending 10 days in jail for refusing to take an alcohol test and driving without a license. 8. Domingo Herman Former New York Yankees pitcher Domingo Herman was at the height of his career when it all came crashing down in August of 2023 over an alleged drunken outburst in the team's clubhouse. Witnesses told the Wall Street Journal that Herman flipped over a sofa, smashed at least one TV, and had aggressive confrontations with several teammates and team manager Aaron Boone. Herman has struggled with alcohol abuse in the past and has also had issues with domestic violence. He was suspended for 81 games in 2019 and 2020 after slapping his girlfriend while drunk at a charity event. He allegedly became even more violent after the couple arrived home later that evening. Law enforcement wasn't called to the scene, but Herman's girlfriend locked herself in a room and called the wife of one of his teammates. The couple drove to Herman's home, where the teammate tried to calm him down. Following the clubhouse tantrum, Herman agreed to voluntarily enter rehab and was placed on the Yankees' restricted list. 7. Demi Burton 20-year-old Demi Burton had already been drinking and appeared to be intoxicated when she boarded a Manchester-bound flight in Abu Dhabi in 2019. She continued drinking on the plane and allegedly began asking male passengers to go to the bathroom with her so they could join the Mile High Club. The men initially tried to laugh off Burton's behavior and end the conversation politely, but surrounding travelers became irritated by her overt behavior and asked her to quiet down. Burton hurled profanities and insults in response, causing severe distress to multiple passengers around her including people with children. At the urging of a distressed flyer, a flight attendant refused Burton's request for more wine. But another crew member was unaware that she'd been cut off and served her the booze. Burton allegedly asked for more alcohol. By then, her behavior had become noticeable enough for the entire crew to know not to serve her any more drinks. But she kept approaching different flight attendants and asking for booze claiming that she needed it to prevent a panic attack. When the employees told Burton that she wouldn't be getting any more alcohol, she launched into a tirade. She shouted, You may as well just land the plane now then, while waving her fist in a threatening manner and demanding to talk to the pilot. She was also accused of headbutting, kicking, and biting crew members and passengers as they tried to calm her down. Six crew members and passengers spent the rest of the flight restraining the young woman. Burton pleaded guilty to being drunk on an airplane and five counts of assault. Her defense attorney pushed for leniency, claiming that his client drank because she was nervous about flying. He also claimed that his client was apprehensive about returning home to her abusive family after fleeing to Australia for three months to get away from them. The lawyer urged the judge to spare Burton from prison time, but she received a six-month sentence due to the seriousness of her actions. 6. Mark Lee Roberts After being convicted of a disorderly conduct charge in 2015, Mark Lee Roberts of Lady Lake, Florida, was ordered to attend anger management and abstain from drinking alcohol as requirements of his probation. But he violated the terms and landed himself back in jail without bond. Five years later, in August 2020, police responded to a Wawa gas station in Lady Lake where the 54-year-old was seen drinking an open beer and appeared to be intoxicated. He told the officers that he would walk to his brother's house nearby and then left the business. Later that day, he showed up at a local residence with a drink in hand and allegedly began insulting a woman he'd never met before. Roberts was also accused of hurling racial slurs at a couple who lived at the home. 
Police tracked him down at another house nearby, where he was sitting on the porch, quote, drinking a tall alcoholic beverage. He was booked into the Lake County Jail on charges of disorderly intoxication and disorderly conduct. However, he was released on a $1,000 bond. Two months later, police were called to a house in Fruitland Park in response to a complaint about Robert screaming on a resident's porch. By the time officers arrived, he had smashed a pumpkin against the house. He walked into the street and collapsed, prompting law enforcement to call paramedics to the scene. As EMTs loaded Roberts onto a stretcher, he allegedly began shouting inappropriate remarks about his privates and toward women who were at the scene. After receiving medical treatment, he was booked into jail on charges of criminal mischief and disorderly intoxication. Less than four weeks later, Roberts was arrested yet again. This time, he was accused of throwing a fit in the liquor store section of a Publix grocery store that he'd been kicked out of just minutes earlier. After berating an employee, he allegedly approached a pair of shoppers and challenged them to a fight. Responding officers immediately noticed that the disheveled and unkempt suspect reeked of booze. As they placed Roberts under arrest and put him in the back of a patrol car, he continued acting belligerently and screaming at them through the window. As a result, he was charged with disorderly intoxication. About a month later, Roberts was found lying on the shoulder of a busy highway, just inches from traffic. He was reportedly extremely intoxicated and acted verbally aggressive toward emergency medical responders. The repeat offender was then booked on a disorderly intoxication charge. It's unclear what he's up to these days, but he's managed to avoid making any more news headlines. 5. John Monroe In November 2023, Orange County deputies responded to a reported battery at the Citricos restaurant inside Disney World's Grand Floridian Resort. Upon arriving at the scene, they spoke with a hostess who explained that a group of two men and two women came in for dinner, despite only having a reservation for three. One of the group members, later identified as 64-year-old John Monroe, was wearing a t-shirt and swim shorts, which violates the restaurant's formal dress code. As the vice president of hospitality, sales, and marketing at an upscale resort in Hilton Head, South Carolina, Monroe was most likely familiar with hospitality protocol. However, he certainly didn't act like it that evening. After being told he couldn't enter the restaurant in his casual attire, he said that he would just wait with his group until they were seated. But when the hostess led the group to their table, Monroe allegedly tried tagging along. A woman with the group reportedly pleaded with the hostess not to let Monroe sit with them, stating, He is really drunk, undressed, and it's my birthday, and I'm embarrassed. When the employee told Monroe he had to leave, he allegedly slapped her on the forehead three times while reading her name tag and saying her name out loud. The 19-year-old hostess was uninjured, but chose to press charges against the belligerent resort guest. In an arrest affidavit, deputies noted that they observed telltale signs of intoxication, including slurred speech, glossy red eyes, and constant repeating that he was going to sue Disney. Monroe was charged with battery and was held in jail overnight. He pleaded not guilty to the charge and has been fired from his job amid the ongoing case. 4. Dolce Huertas After having a few cocktails during a Frontier Airlines flight from Orlando to Philadelphia in November 2023, a passenger rose out of her seat and announced that she had to pee as the plane was about to land. Later identified as 60-year-old Dolce Huertas, the woman allegedly cursed at a flight attendant who told her to sit down. She begrudgingly complied, but began harassing passengers after the plane landed and was taxiing to the gate. Cabin crew members called airport security to the gate and notified the captain of the situation. As the aircraft approached the gate, Huertas allegedly pushed past other passengers and tried entering the bathroom, but was stopped by the crew. She then pulled her pants and underwear down and squatted in the aisle as if she was preparing to relieve herself right then and there. 
Thankfully, though, that didn't happen. Huerta stood up and pulled her pants up, but she continued cursing at fellow passengers and even threatened to kill some of them as she tried shoving her way past the crew. She now faces federal charges of indecent exposure, simple assault, and interference with flight crew members and attendants. 3. Stephen Bebo During a drunken rampage on the night before New Year's Eve in 2022, 32-year-old Stephen Bebo shoved a woman at a home in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. He then took a chainsaw to the inside of the residence, damaging clothing and furniture. Both Stephen and the female victim were extremely lucky that neither of them were hurt during the alcohol-fueled tirade. However, the victim suffered from lasting mental trauma following the terrifying ordeal. She was spared from having to testify at trial when Stephen pleaded guilty to mischief and assault. According to court documents obtained by Sudbury.com, Crown prosecutors recommended six months of house arrest, which would allow Stephen to continue working while he repaid his debt to society. The defense urged the judge for leniency based on Stephen's status as a first-time offender and his efforts to get his life back on track. Shortly after his arrest, Stephen quit drinking and began attending sobriety meetings. As a result of his legal problems, his business partner parted ways with him, causing him to lose lucrative work in the HVAC industry. He went on to find a good job with an employer who vouched for his character in court, and he seemed genuinely remorseful for his actions. The judge granted him a conditional discharge along with 18 months of probation, which meant that he'd avoid a conviction as long as he avoided any further trouble with the law. 2. Jerry Hudler In October 2017, former NHL player Jerry Hudler made international news headlines for throwing a drunken tantrum during a Delta Airlines flight from New York to Prague. It began when the 33-year-old allegedly asked for a flight attendant for Coke and got upset when she handed him a can of soda. He apparently wanted drugs and was accused of losing his temper when the crew member refused this request. According to news reports, Hudler told the flight attendant that he was going to call his friends and have her killed when the plane arrived in Prague. He then went to the restroom and emerged a few minutes later with white powder on his lip. Apparently, he forgot to use the bathroom for its intended purpose, and instead tried urinating on a food cart on his way back to his seat. The flight attendant later told police that she grabbed Hudler's hand to stop him from exposing himself. After landing in Prague, the belligerent athlete was handed over to law enforcement. Hudler gave a different version of events, claiming that the incident was much more trivial than it was made out to be. When the story broke, the police were still investigating, and as of now, it's unclear whether Hudler ever faced criminal charges. 1. James Finister During a Spirit Airlines flight from Louisville, Kentucky to Orlando, Florida in January 2024, 47-year-old first-time flyer James Warren Finister allegedly propositioned flight attendants twice about joining the Mile High Club with him. According to a criminal complaint, cabin crew members moved him three times due to his disruptive behavior. He then grabbed a flight attendant and pulled her into his seat, then laid down. He refused to get up, forcing crew members to pause in flight services to pick him up off the floor. A flight attendant would later tell investigators that Finister asked a lot of questions about the plane's cockpit, which made her feel uneasy. Needless to say, he was arrested following the two-hour flight. During questioning, he reportedly told investigators that he consumed several shots before the flight because he was nervous. Since he had never flown before, authorities charged Finister with one count of interference with flight crew members, which can carry a sentence of up to 20 years if convicted. Speaking with the Daily Beast, he claimed that he slept for most of the flight and described the allegations against him as bogus. According to Finister's version of events, he made a lighthearted comment about the Mile High Club while boarding the plane, then fell asleep until the end of the flight. He denied touching any of the flight attendants and claimed that he only asked questions about the cockpit out of curiosity. As his federal criminal case unfolds, he's restricted to traveling between Michigan and Florida. He's also banned from drinking alcohol, which likely isn't a bad thing 
considering the effect it seems to have on him. 8. Isabel Quintero In May 2022, police officers in Albuquerque, New Mexico, responded to a call about a car parked in the middle of a highway ramp. Body cam footage showed a deputy approaching the vehicle in question, where a young woman seemed to be passed out behind the wheel, with her windshield wipers still on and all of the doors locked. Officers pounded on the window as the woman slowly woke up. She was almost completely incoherent as she struggled to answer basic questions and needed assistance getting out of her car. The woman eventually identified herself as 21-year-old Isabel Quintero. At first, she denied drinking any alcohol when asked by an officer, who pointed out that she literally had a bottle of booze in her hand when police approached her car. When Isabel noticed a cop looking inside her vehicle, she started telling him that he didn't have permission to search. She even responded with a hard no when another officer asked if she'd undergo a field sobriety test. While being led away in handcuffs, she also told an officer repeatedly to shut the F up. Aware that the young woman wasn't exactly in her right mind, the officers displayed remarkable patience and professionalism as they helped her into their vehicle, put her seatbelt on, and drove her to the police station. Throughout the rest of the booking process, she was clearly spacing out in her own world. At one point, she repeatedly said that she was having fun. She also talked about how hot she thought the cops were, and she asked for a lawyer twice before telling the officers how funny she thought they all were and laughing like a mad woman. One thing Quintero was consistent about was her refusal to take a breathalyzer test. She was put in the drunk tank, where she continued talking to herself and laughing loudly. Not long after, she was charged with aggravated DWI and battery on a police officer. Records show that she was released while she squared away her legal issues in court. 7. Michelle Salentine 28-year-old Michelle Salentine was in her sixth year of service in the Platteville, Wisconsin police force when an informant claimed she was a regular crack user and that she'd even used the drug while on the job. Her superiors were shocked since there had been no previous issues with Salentine. The informant contacted the FBI back in 2010 and said that they saw Salentine smoke crack at least six times, including when she was in uniform and carrying her service weapon. Throughout the investigation, the tipster updated law enforcement on Salentine's alleged drug use, which included two occasions where she used crack in the middle of the night before going back on duty. The wayward officer was also recorded using drugs in audio footage captured by the informant through a wire. During a search of Salentine's home, FBI agents found several suspected marijuana and crack pipes, as well as evidence of drug residue. Salentine admitted during questioning that she had been using crack for about a year. By then, it had gone from being a recreational habit to something she relied on to deal with her life problems. At least two people, including someone she lived with, said that they saw the cop's drug use firsthand. Salentine pleaded guilty to maintaining a crack house and served a year and one day in federal prison. As you've probably already guessed, she's no longer on the force. 6. Diamond Golden On what started off as a normal Saturday afternoon in early June 2023, over 500 people attended a pop-up party thrown at a park in Lake Butler, Florida. According to police, a 23-year-old Gainesville woman named Diamond Golden used Facebook to spread the word about the gathering. Guests came in droves at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Members of the normally quiet community were shocked as the partygoers descended upon the peaceful park and filled nearby streets. Union County Sheriff's deputies saw a lot of people drinking and doing drugs as they tried to break up the disruptive event. They ended up using chemical agents to disperse the crowd, and at one point shots were even fired. Some partygoers later claimed that police officers shot into the crowd, but an agency spokesperson denied the allegation. Several people were arrested that day, including a young man who was accused of shooting another guest. Thankfully, nobody was seriously injured. Golden is accused of trying to cover up her role in planning the party by deleting crucial evidence from her phone. She allegedly has a history of being involved in similar events. Determined to stop the parties from continuing, authorities charged her with inciting or encouraging a riot. 
When the story broke headlines, the sheriff's office announced that Golden would be held on a $50,000 bond. Her case seems to be ongoing. 5. Olivia Lake In January 2015, a lawyer from Poway, California named Jeffrey Lake and his wife Jackie Lake threw a Playboy-themed 18th birthday party for their young daughter Olivia. 200 people showed up to the bash, which was dubbed Liv's Playboy Mansion, including 150 guests who were under the legal drinking age. This didn't stop anyone from drinking, though, since there was plenty of booze. An array of racy photos that were taken at the bash even popped up on social media throughout the night. But the fun ended when San Diego County deputies showed up responding to a noise complaint. According to a police report, deputies observed underage drinkers carrying alcoholic beverages outside the home. Inside the property, they found two unconscious partygoers. Law enforcement quickly broke up the gathering, and Jeff Lake was charged with violating the city's social host ordinance, which bans residents from hosting events for underage drinkers. He was also accused of acting argumentative toward deputies at the scene, and he initially claimed that he had done nothing wrong. Lake ultimately took a deal and pleaded guilty to a reduced infraction charge. In other words, it was more or less a violation of the same level of a traffic ticket. Had Lake been convicted of his original charge, he could have faced six months in jail and a fine of $1,000. Instead, he avoided jail time entirely and paid a measly $125 fine. 4. Macy Regan and Dixie Styles It's normal for parties to spiral out of control on the 4th of July, so sheriff's deputies in Bay County, Florida, weren't too surprised when they were called to a home in Callaway in response to an assault and battery. According to a police report, a fight broke out at the party between a few men. Shortly after, 23-year-old Macy Reagan tried leaving the party and returning to her home next door. She was then confronted by 18-year-old Dixie Styles, who reportedly accused her of stealing both alcohol and vape pens. Reagan allegedly pulled a 9mm handgun from her waistband out for protection, and Styles knocked it out of her hand. The two women fought, and Reagan was accused of biting off the top of Styles' ear during the fight. Doctors were unable to reattach the top of Dixie's ear, and both women received multiple bruises and lacerations. Reagan was later charged with felony battery causing bodily harm, while Styles was hit with a battery charge. Their cases are still ongoing. 3. Vera McCooley Controversial party behavior is nothing new for the NYPD, and the 2021 holiday season was no exception. During one precinct's holiday party at a bar that year, a 26-year-old rookie cop named Vera McCooley gave a lap dance to her boss, Lieutenant Nick McGarry. Viral footage showed McCooley grinding on McGarry's lap in front of a crowd of onlookers. Some customers who witnessed the display were fine with it, including one person who pointed out that this is the type of thing that goes on at holiday cop parties. Other patrons were disgusted, telling reporters that it wasn't exactly something they wanted to look at while they were having dinner with their families. It didn't take long for McCooley and McGarry to realize that they'd messed up. Their higher-ups were furious about the incident and the viral clip. Also, McGarry was married, and his wife was not happy. When asked about the story, the wife lost her temper and had to be restrained from attacking a reporter. And who can blame her? A police source told the New York Post that as a rookie, McCooley was essentially less culpable than McGarry, who should have set an example for less experienced officers. After the footage circulated, he was reassigned to a transit division. McCooley, who was not disciplined, told the Post that a co-worker dared her to give McGarry a lap dance. Being the natural life of the party, as she described herself, she lacked the foresight to predict the ways the situation could go wrong. The young woman apologized for what she did, clarifying that she didn't know McGarry was married when it happened and that she hoped it didn't cause damage to the couple's marriage. She also expressed remorse for the impact the ordeal had on McGarry's career, which basically relegated him to the rank of a subway cop. McCooley went on to say that she didn't think she would have faced such harsh judgment if she'd been a man putting the moves on someone. She speculated that the incident would have been taken more as a joke and less as a scandal. 
but those weren't the circumstances, and it was arguably a moot point to think about the what-ifs of the situation. 2. Peaches In 2008, police officers responded to a noise complaint from a duplex in Washington, D.C. There was a house party happening inside, with a makeshift strip club, complete with underwear-clad women who were dancing for tips. Some partygoers initially claimed that it was just a birthday party. Others said that there was a bachelor party, but nobody could identify who the supposed guest of honor even was. Police also couldn't find the host, who some people identified as a woman that they only knew as Peaches. After failing to get to the bottom of the situation, the cops concluded that the home was abandoned and that the guests had not been legally invited there. They arrested 21 partygoers for unlawful entry. People claimed they had permission to be at the event, but there was no way to confirm it without knowing who Peaches was or where to even find her. Sixteen defendants even sued the force, arguing that they had been unlawfully arrested that night. The charges were later reduced and then dropped entirely, but the lawsuit went back and forth for years in the court system. Judges initially ruled in favor of the party goers and awarded them a whopping $680,000. The ruling was upheld by the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, but the officers appealed the case all the way to the Supreme Court, which reversed the decision and actually ruled in favor of the police. Meanwhile, Peach's identity remained hidden even in legal documents, which did not identify the woman's true name. Finally, in 2017, almost a decade after the party and during the ongoing court battle, Peaches was publicly identified as a woman named Veronica Little. She worked as a bartender and was known for organizing private birthday and bachelor parties. She was extremely well-liked among almost everyone who knew her, and in an era before you could place an order for anything online, her connections proved invaluable for those looking to throw a massive get-together. The lawyer representing the plaintiffs who sued the police tried getting Peaches to cooperate in the court case, but she wanted nothing to do with the situation. Sadly, she passed away from respiratory complications in 2016 at only 50 years old. 1. Rebecca Warren On the evening after Christmas in 2019, police in Auburn Hills, Michigan responded to several calls about a jeep weaving between traffic lanes and sideswiping a guardrail along an interstate. Behind the wheel was 48-year-old State Representative Rebecca Warren, who told officers that she was heading home to Ann Arbor after an event in Detroit. It was strange that Warren was traveling on Interstate 75, which doesn't serve as a direct link between the two cities, but she didn't seem in her right mind at all that night. She performed poorly on a field sobriety test and even admitted to drinking two or three glasses of wine, but she refused to take a breathalyzer test. In dash cam footage of the traffic stop, Warren was heard saying, I'm elected, I'm a senator, this is going to be the most famous arrest you've ever made. After being put in the back of a squad car, the politician could be heard talking about how the arrest could ruin her life. She expressed a fear that she wouldn't get a chance to fix her career after the story broke. A blood sample was eventually taken after police obtained a warrant, revealing a blood alcohol level of 0.21, over two and a half times the legal limit. Under Michigan law, it qualified Warren as super drunk. The incident wasn't as life-ruining as she expected it to be. Almost immediately after being released on bond pending the outcome of her case, Warren issued a mea culpa on social media. She admitted to drunk driving, commended the police for handling the situation professionally, and apologized for her poor decisions. Warren remained vocally apologetic over the next few months while she sorted the case out, until she finally reached a point where she decided that she had done everything possible to show that her remorse was authentic. She pleaded guilty to a reduced misdemeanor DUI charge and was sentenced to a year of probation and 10 days of community service. Later that year, she decided against re-election. Would you rather get the opportunity to take back one single night of embarrassing drunk behavior as if it never happened or find $300 cash on the sidewalk? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.